It's January 24th, 2010. Brett Favre and the Minnesota Vikings are facing off against Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints in the NFC Championship game. It's tied 28-28, and Favre is marching his team downfield in the final seconds of the fourth quarter. At 40 years old, this may be Favre's last chance to make it back to the Super Bowl. But where did these points come from? Why is it third and 15? And how weird is it to see a Packers legend playing for the Vikings? Let's rewind. With the game on the line, this seasoned vet has no lack of experience. Including playoffs, this is Brett Favre's 309th consecutive start and 24th postseason game. But the fact that he's here at all is surprising to many people. Following the end to a 2005 season that saw the Packers finish 4-12, Favre was non-committal on coming back to a team that was in a rebuilding phase. But he did, and their 8-8 eight eight season ended with a win over the NFC North champion and arch-rival Chicago Bears. He was given a standing ovation in Soldier Field and gave a tearful post-game interview, leading many to believe this time he was going to retire. But again, Favre was not ready to hang up his cleats. He came back in 2007 and took the 13-3 Packers all the way to the NFC Championship game. But Favre's overtime interception gave way to a 23-20 loss to the Giants, it would be his final pass as a Packer. Favre formally announced his retirement on March 4th, 2008. As they say, all good things must come, come to an end. But then, after what some reported as convincing by agent Bus Cook, Favre changed his mind. On July 14th, he gave an interview where he stated that he was never fully committed to retirement. Did I want to play? Yes, 100%, no. The problem was, however, that head coach Mike McCarthy and the Packers had already committed to their quarterback of the future, Aaron Rodgers, who they picked in the first round of the 2005 draft. The Packers even went as far as to offer Favre $20 million over 10 years to stay retired. But money wasn't going to keep Favre off the field. And since the Packers told him he wouldn't start if he came back, Favre began discussing trade options. Connections with the Vikings started when reports surfaced that Favre had been in contact with Minnesota head coach Brad Childress. The Packers filed tampering charges against the Vikings, but they were ultimately found not guilty. The Packers had no interest in sending their Hall of Fame quarterback to a division rival. So once reinstated, Favre was given permission to speak only with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the New York Jets. On August 7, 2008, Favre was traded to the Jets for a conditional fourth round pick. After starting 8-3, Favre and the Jets lost four of their last five and missed the playoffs. It was later revealed that Favre had been playing with a torn biceps tendon in those final games. So, after 18 seasons, Favre informed the Jets that he was retiring. He was released from his contract in April of 2009 and officially cut in May. In August, he signed with the Minnesota Vikings. Just like millennials, it appeared as if retirement just wasn't an option for Favre. In a testament to his durability, the 2009 season saw Favre set the record for most consecutive starts by a player in NFL history. He also was selected to his 11th Pro Bowl while leading the Vikings to a 12-4 record, edging out his former Packers for the NFC North title by one game. The Vikings opened the playoffs with a decisive 34-3 win over the Cowboys in the divisional round. Which brings us here, to the NFC Championship game between the Vikings and the Saints, Brett Favre's favorite team while growing up in Mississippi. With the score tied late in the fourth, it's a wonder that Favre is still in the game. He has been punished by the Saints D since the first snap. The first play of the opening drive set the tone for the game, as Saints linebacker Scott Fujita sent Favre crashing to the turf after an incompletion. A play drawn up by this man, defensive coordinator Greg Williams, who the Saints hired this past offseason. It's almost as if Greg Williams was giving incentives to hurt the aging quarterback. Not on the field in this critical moment is running back Adrian Peterson, who is both partly to thank and partly to blame for this Viking situation. Peterson entered the postseason with seven fumbles, the most by a non-quarterback. He also finished the regular season with the most rushing touchdowns. Both were on display in this game. Peterson scored three times, including a 19-yard touchdown on the opening drive of the game. He also fumbled twice, although both were recovered by the Vikings. The most costly of his mistakes is actually credited as a fumble by Favre. At the end of the second quarter, tied at 14, 
Reggie Bush muffed a punt that gave the Vikings the ball on the Saints' 10-yard line. Then on second and goal from the four, with his focus more on where he's going than where the ball is, Peterson bumbled the handoff. The Saints recovered and the two teams headed to the locker room, deadlocked at 14. Overall, the Vikings lost three of their six fumbles this game. This coming after finishing the regular season third in the NFL in protecting the ball, having committed only 18 turnovers all season. And it wasn't just the fumbles that were hurting them. After a third quarter drive extending penalty on Saints defensive end Anthony Hargrove, a clearly hurt Favre was picked off by Jonathan Vilma. The high-low hit Favre took during that throw caused him to be helped off the field and examined by the Vikings medical staff. It was the 11th hit Favre had taken this game. But again, despite four turnovers, the Vikings are here, with a chance for their first Super Bowl appearance since 1977. And Favre's top receiver this game is not Sidney Rice, who led the Vikings in receptions during the regular season. It's this man, Bernard Berrien, who's having his biggest game of the year, topping 100 yards for the first time. His worst moment of the game, however, came with just under 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. With the Vikings in the red zone and down seven, Favre hit Berrien for what looked like a possible first down until a fumble was forced by Saints quarterback Tracy Porter. But Berrien and Porter hadn't seen the last of each other. Back in the red zone, the Vikings still trailing by a touchdown, with just under six minutes to go in the fourth, Favre aired one out to Berrien in the corner of the end zone. It was incomplete, but pass interference was called on Porter, and the Vikings got the ball on the one-yard line. Two plays later, Peterson punched it in to tie the game at 28. After a big defensive stop, the Vikings got the ball back and marched to the Saints' 33-yard line. They were within range for Vikings field goal kicker Ryan Longwell. After two rushing attempts for no gain, the Vikings called a timeout on third and 10 with 19 seconds left. One of the big things going against the Vikings heading into this game was the deafening crowd noise in New Orleans. So Favre and most of the Vikings offense wore earplugs, but communication was still difficult. But one of the reasons this game is even in New Orleans has a lot to do with Tracy Porter, whose forced fumble and pass interference has had a huge impact on this game. In week seven versus the Dolphins, the Saints were clinging to a six point lead. With the Dolphins near midfield and just over two minutes left on the clock, Porter picked off Chad Henney and returned it for a game ceiling touchdown. The following week, the Saints played the Falcons. With the Saints holding on to a four point lead with eight and a half minutes left in the fourth, Porter picked off Matt Ryan. The ensuing drive by the Saints padded their lead. If both those games had gone the other way, it's possible that the Vikings are the one seed and then this game is in Minnesota. But it's not. It's in front of a roaring New Orleans crowd and coming out of the timeout, information was clearly lost among players. The Vikings got called for too many men on the field and the penalty pushed them out of field goal range. After four years of seesawing on retirement, Brett Favre is standing at the precipice of a heroic Super Bowl run. 12 years removed from his last Super Bowl appearance and 33 years removed from Minnesota's last appearance, Favre is in position to return the Vikings to the championship. In a game riddled with turnovers and crushing blows, it all comes down to this. Welcome to a moment in history. Favre sprints to his right, throws back across the middle, and he's intercepted. Porter. The Saints got the ball to start overtime and kicked the game-winning field goal. Then they went on to win the Super Bowl. Sorry, Vikings fans. Like and subscribe and share this with everyone on Earth.